So here's what you missed on Glee. Eight million years ago, specifically in March of 2018, I published a video about Ryan Murphy and the various creative practices he uses in his shows that, in my opinion, affect their quality. And all of his old shows and new shows aside, there was one comment that asked me specifically about Glee, and about when the show jumped to the shark, specifically the opinion that goes around that the show jumped to the shark after the first episode. I have so many thoughts on this. Spoilers to follow. You were right to shine the spotlight on the fact that those kids are minorities. Because you're all minorities. You're in the Glee Club. Finding where Glee jumped the shark is hard because it does it so many times. They do a Saw parody in season 6, like, come on now. But Glee was a cultural phenomenon. It was iconic, we were all stands, and to be fair, I would die on a hill for season 1 as a piece of television history. So, what is this talk of Glee jumping the shark after episode 1? Without going into all the things that would later affect Glee, the merchandising, the record sales, their attempts to discover new bands, their tours, their movies, their guest stars, their cast editions, their writer editions, Mark Salling, Corey Monteith, Naya and Leah... It, the most important thing to note about Glee in relation to its first episode was that it was huge. The pilot itself was picked up by Fox almost immediately, and it premiered on May 19th of 2009, right after the first part of the American Idol finale. Chris Allen! The episode, for reasons we'll get into, was a hit, and even had its own Comic-Con panel in July. The rest of the show didn't even air until September. I just want to state how insane that is. One episode made such an impact on pop culture that there was a whole Comic-Con panel, and people showed up to it, and the Glee hype was already blown up. So that brings us to why episode 1 was so important. Glee was, at the beginning, and people will argue that it was the whole time, but it wasn't, a show about characters looking for meaning. It all starts with Will Schuster, a Spanish teacher who misses the glory days of the Glee Club. Yada yada yada, you've seen the show. His episode 1 conflict is basically that he is seemingly unhappy, or rather seems to have just settled, into a life with his it's nagging, people. demeaning wife, Terry. Oh, does it have mayo? Yeah. Well, if my diabetes comes back, I can't get pregnant. By the way, this show has a problem writing women. And Will hopes that by taking over the Glee Club, he can find meaning in his adult life again. But his wife is pregnant and he can't afford the bills, so she pressures him to quit his job as an educator and become an accountant. Can My passion is teaching, Terry. For the last time, I don't want to be an accountant. Don't you feel said that people could change? Emma is the guidance counselor who has feelings for Will, but he is tragically married. She convinces Will to stay with the Glee Club at the end of the episode, appealing to his sense of nostalgia. Sue is the head of the cheerleading team who is determined to shut down the Glee Club for taking some of her funding. Then there's Rachel, she is unpopular, unfamous, and unloved except by her parents. Her dream is to be a Broadway star, and hopes to be the star of the Glee Club. Finn is a quarterback who wants to keep his dead father's legacy alive and not disappoint his mother in any way, which Mr. Schuster knowingly manipulated when he blackmailed him with weed. You want to tell me how long you've had a drug problem? I don't even know who the chronic lady is. Quinn is Finn's girlfriend and is angry that he is getting close to Rachel. Hi, Finn. RuPaul. Puck is Finn's friend from the football team and is angry that he's stopped bullying the unpopular kids and has even gone on to become friends with them. And then Kurt, Tina, Artie, and Mercedes um, don't get as much screen time in this first episode, but basically if we were to make assumptions, they are probably going to learn to come to terms with their sexuality, stutter, disability, and diva-ness slash need for the spotlight. At least, that's what we think. The first episode sets up this complex chessboard of pieces that all revolve around the Glee Club. Each character's motivations bleed into the next characters and show how they all affect each other. Honestly, that's why it was so affecting, I think, why the underdog narrative took off so well. The realistic option would be to get a better paying job for your child, give the school funding to the more successful club, stay faithful to your girlfriend, stick to the status quo, etc. But this one club was going to prove to have massive shakeups based on how many lives it was going to impact. And then... This is the show where, starting in episode 2, nobody ever has to deal with any of their problems. Mr. Shoe's baby? Fake. You're having what's called a hysterical pregnancy? So those financial problems? Gone. Will he have to ponder the idea of a different job? Nah. 
Those late nights stretching him thin, those will last like half an episode. I, I, I want you to give up being a janitor. What? Yeah. We don't need a new house. We'll turn my craft room into a nursery. As a result of the baby being fake, Mr. Shu's marriage eventually crumbles, so he'll never have to deal with his strained relationship with Terry and his half of the root of those problems, and that clears the love triangle for Emma. So Ken Tanaka never stood a chance. The Quinn being pregnant throws multiple wrenches into the game, but sadly none of them stay very long. Will the baby affect Finn's idea of legacy and making his mom and dad proud? Never mind, the baby's not his. <laughs> Will the baby at least affect the Quinn Finn Rachel love triangle and who Finn feels a sense of responsibility to? Nah, it's Puck's baby then now. I realized the only thing I needed to fix was us. Rachel wants to be special and famous and a star. Does that happen? Kind of. She never has to deal with the reasons she is so unliked. I told you this, Finn. Obviously, it was Rachel. <laughs> or ever compromise in favor of a character with lesser opportunity. Where's Rachel, huh? I don't see her here. And just one day in the series finale Rachel wins a Tony and everyone's like, ah, yeah, we love Rachel. <laughs> Will Tina get over her stutter? Turns out it was never real. I've been faking it. Faking what? Mercedes sings I'm Not Going as a show of character development, but she still never gets a solo, ever. Where's Rachel, huh? Mr. Shu will never face the consequences for the fact that he planted drugs on a teenager. You are so much cooler than I ever thought you were. Also, Sue's story with the Glee Club is just a plain mess. It's just a thick, unkept mess. Kurt and Artie have pretty good episodes devoted to their respective issues. I'll Hi, give them that. Hi, I'm I'll be auditioning for the role of Kicker. So, like... Overall, uh, yeah, did the show jump the shark? I wouldn't go so far to say that, because the camp of Glee was part of the fun. It's part of the reason people still talk about it today. You think this is hard? Try being waterboarded. That's hard. But that first episode showed a glimpse of a show that, if taken in a different direction, would have been extremely interesting to see. A show about extremely sad and lonely people in a sad and lonely world willing to make hard choices in order to try and find a more fulfilling life and then dealing with the consequences of those choices. That you happier than I've ever seen. But in the glee we got, there were no consequences that caused character growth. There were just plot devices. It was a musical soap opera, and that's fine. But it wasn't real. It didn't hit as hard as much as seeing a grown adult deal with the consequences of choosing between your low-paying dream job or a desk job to support your unborn child. Everyone eventually got everything they wanted. And again, it wasn't terrible, but like the fact that there are still think pieces being written about Glee years after it finished airing, and most of them are negative, goes to show just where exactly Glee ended up on the pop culture spectrum. And, I mean, you should listen to the Glee cast themselves roast the show. My least favorite Glee song is yes. Don't Stop Believin'. Uh, my least favorite yes. song? But it's probably Don't Stop Believin'. Damn it! My least favorite Glee song is Don't Stop Believin'. The Gaga <laughs> situation was just messy. Okay. Because I think that was just, it was just the hard times. The lobster. And that's what you missed on Glee. Yeah, I'm a nice little 